many people say that something has to look like uh, what it does, and it's not necessary. This was a cement factory. The factory is not necessarily a place where you have to do cement. You know, instead of being full of gravel, it was full of architects. So it changes, it changes function. So form doesn't always follow function. Well, this was a land which, uh, which has a, uh, it was a land which had this ugly, terrible, dusty cement factory which was uh, moving away. So the factory was more a work of uh, destruction than construction. The factory was basically half destroyed. You have to destroy, destroy a lot. This was an incredibly messy thing. It was full of uh, gravel and cement and so on. You had to empty all the things. And so all the, the silos were there were no floors, and so we made offices inside. We put the floors in. We put the windows in, these are the windows. Gothic windows. So in fact, this place is a place which was done for, you know, for construction. And now it's a place which is full of architects, so it uh, has another use. We are now in Ricardo Bofil Architecture uh, Studio. This was an old cement factory. So the original site was as big as the whole block. So it was like a huge area. And Ricardo Bofil started the reconstruction by keeping the best parts and the parts that were the most interesting parts of the silos, you know. There were over 30 silos and over 4,000 ki 4, yes, kilometers of underpaths around the whole cement factory. Now there are only remaining working space, eight silos. The first area is these six silos, which is the architecture office of Ricardo Bofil. The second area is the private residence of Ricardo. The third area, we have the apartments for guests. These silos, they were completely closed, you know, and he created these three levels. These silos, they were used basically just for the storage of the cement, you know, so they were like um, six big cylinders for the storage. So this is part of the intervention also that they open it for the vertical circulation. Four silos which are open to each other. This is the work atmosphere and you see the silos. All the silos open onto a central space where people can meet. So you've got all the people working at the same time. It's like the meeting room here. <laughs> so, the, so the main idea is really silos. I mean, that's sort of the main feel of it. Well, the building are silos. Yeah. There's no... Yeah. It's a silo composition. <laughs> It's like, this is like being in a... There's a, there's a Spanish expression which is strange, which is, es una lata. It's a, but, it, <laughs> but it's not. No, it's, in fact, it's very pleasant. It's an oasis. <laughs> you 
it has two dimensions. One thing is the oasis because it's like in a garden and it's away from, it's in the suburb, but at the same time it's full of trees and so on. It's a, it's a little bit like a monastery. Like a place where you can think, you're, you're a little bit withdrawn. You're not in the middle of the city. You come to this place and you live in this place. So now, yes, we can enter. <laughs> so, entrance to um, private residence of Ricardo Bofill. Here is already the kitchen. And here are some uh, stairs up to the, uh, the main residence upstairs, which is called Sala Cubica. This area is called La Catedral, the Cathedral. It resembles to cathedral, yeah, it's very much, it? right? The height is like more than 10 meters. There is Pablo's office. This is the Gaudi chair, yes. And here is mainly used for uh, meeting rooms or even some uh, hosting some events or like um, even some concerts sometimes. Here there's a surprise of space all the time. You know, it's quite remarkable actually, the spaces, round ones. You have in the cathedral you have these things which are falling down from the ceiling. And you have these incredible big windows which are, you know, framing the sky. And the whole thing is surprising. It's interesting what he chose to keep. Yes. That's not an obvious thing to leave in, but it's beautiful. Yes, it's yeah. beautiful, I know. I think, yeah, that's part of the idea of Ricardo, to leave some of the objects still how it remains, you know, existing. I mean, even if it doesn't make any, like, a complete sense, with the rest of the architecture, he left some objects like, like small sculptures. There you have the original model of the whole cement factory. Yeah, you see, this was the whole block. And we enter to first to these six silos, which was the office area. And these four silos is the guest rooms or apartments. And in, we are now in there, in this area, which is La Catedral. They yes. demolished most of this and they kept more, more of this area. It, it used to be that big, but this was what they found when they came. From here you can see where the factory moved. This cement factory was moving away and it went on to the other mountain. And Ricardo decided to actually develop, make a, a development project. So it was not only the, the factory, it was the factory plus the land around. So he built uh, Walden 7. which is this three-dimensional building. This Walden, this village in the air. It's like has streets outside and so on, so it's a very interesting project. Walden is experimental social housing. It's a residential type that starts from modules, you know, from modules for 30 square, square meters each, and it varies according to the requirements of each family, you know. So you have from 30 square meters, maybe two blocks, 60, you have uh, flats, duplex, and different typologies. 
I think for the time it was not a very um, well received, but I think now everybody really appreciates the architecture. By the time probably it was not very well understood. The chimney was also part of the factory. You know, it used to be more than 100 meters high, but it was not very well uh, conserved, so they had to cut it. And in the middle, there's a restaurant now. The existing factory was as big as the size of covering the wall then and all of these surrounding apartment buildings. In these silos, we have the apartments for guests or for the sons of Ricardo. Downstairs is a coffee area for the office, but upstairs is private, the residence for some guests. See, I live in the building as well. Yeah. I have an intimate relationship with this building. Hmm. You discover, you live in. I mean, it's a, it's a non ending project, project which never ends, which is good because you have fun living in it, and because it changes all the time, bad because it's never finished. This is one of the underpaths that they kept. Uh, here are the archives. Nobody's here now. <laughs> These at one time were underground tunnels or...? or yes. So there, are there still underground connections from one silo yes. to the next? Yes, you can connect both these silos you've been, you know, the office, and yeah. in here the residence, yes, they are connected, all of them. Uh, here is printing and some of the archives. And here in the back is the model making room. Hola. The other thing which is important is that Ricardo is the son of a builder. There's a, a strong interest in construction. So it was good to be in a cement factory because this is associated with construction. And this is why many of our projects are not only uh, architectural gestures or architectural, they are something which has to do with construction, which is strongly related to construction. Here are some projects in Barcelona. This is the Hotel Vela. You know, the airport. And here are a couple more rooms for the storage or archives. So this was probably all opened up? Yes, these were opened up by Ricardo to eliminate all the underway paths, you know. So we have seven of these around all the fabrica. So we continue. I think in here, yeah, we can go out this way. We're going to go out from the second uh, group of seals. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, 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 no, I'm confused. Uh, I think we go out this way again. Okay. Because you already saw that. So we go out. There's a lot of underground Yes, space. yes, exactly. A lot of circulation, right? We will access to some small garden that you have in t outside. When you're faced with construction, you're faced with mud and you're faced with walls and concrete and sand and stones and, and painting. So it's, uh, no, no, it's very present. The material is very present. Maria Rosa. The concrete is very important. This is a factory concrete. It's a cheap concrete. 
Sí, gracias. But the good concretes, they can be very, I mean, there's many, many different types of concrete. Uh, they're building in concrete, but it's not all concrete in, uh, in Rome in ancient, ancient times. I don't know, even the material is very important. And the evolution of materials in architecture is complicated. It's at the same time very, very slow and at the same time very fast. This uh, saying about something contemporary or something old, I mean, many times, things which are very old are very much more contemporary. In this factory, there's something about, about time or wearing, which is pleasant, you know. Olding and getting older is pleasant, you know? <laughs> Factory is very fashionable now. They ask us for a project now in China, which is a factory in Pudong, which they want to renovate. So it's very successful, actually. Now. It's published everywhere now, this, this factory. It's unbelievable. After a long time, then truth comes uh, truth. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> So here is like the interior garden of, of the residence. It's like small oasis in the middle of all this concrete industrial building, you know. You can see the remains of the old factory, you know, like all these left elements. It was, I think, very carefully decided what to keep and what not to keep. And Every, uh, until the last detail, is intentional, you know. I do believe that that architecture has been a little bit violent with its, uh, with its history and its existing building. There are many places which don't care about their building heritage. I think this should be now a, a bigger concern for what's built and for renovation and stuff like that. The only problem is that renovation is very expensive. Very complicated to do. It's easier to just you know, destroy it than do something else. I really think that there should be more concern with preservation, renovation, more respect for what has been done and I'm trying to find new uses because you know it doesn't matter you can you can live in a church you can live in a I mean you can live anywhere you can live in a bank you can live in a <laughs> you can live anywhere so I I think it should be I think it should be more concerned with renovation